All right. Next up, guys, um, this was the next topic was a, a lot of interest to me, of a lot of interest to me, because uh, I'm going to be honest here. Housekeeper scares me. <laughs> it's a big word. It, it behaves in, in like a scary way, deletes a lot of things, does a lot of things. You look at the logs and there are many things going on and, and it's, it takes a while figuring out what it does. So our next topic will focus on cleaning up your Zabbix instance, keeping it tidy, keeping it, it small, depending on your requirements. Um, and we will talk about Zabbix Housekeeper and how it does that cleanup. Um, so let's welcome our Zabbix Chief Trainer. What a position, the man himself. And yeah, who else than Chief Trainer to tell us about uh, Zabbix Housekeeping? Welcome, Kaspers. Mm, hello. So can you hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And I will try to share my screen. Just give me a minute. Mm -hmm. We can see it. We can see it. Go ahead. Okay. So that's a core screen. Okay. So yes, today we will talk a lot about housekeeper, about how it works, about internals. So it's not so simple, really. Yes. So it seems like, okay, so what it is, housekeeper just deleting some old data, but all this mechanism is, is not so simple. And uh, yes, usually I'm a chief trainer and, and we are discussing those topics in Zabbix Certified Expert course. But today we will discuss in this meetup. So uh, housekeeper settings, let's start with settings. And let's start with a very simple question. Why Zabbix needs housekeeper at all? Yes, I think you already know the answer because Zabbix is generating a lot of data. Yes, so the biggest data, of course, comes from your items. Yes, those are history, those are trends, but don't forget that also you must store all your events, or maybe you are detecting uh, thousands of problems. Maybe you are correlating events. Yes, so the events table also may grow a lot. You are sending out alerts, so you need to clean them up uh, if you are using the new cool IT service uh, option, then IT services also will generate some alert history. Also, Zabbix audits almost everything which happens with the configuration. So the audit log also may use some space and user sessions. Yes, user sessions, uh, sometimes uh, it happens uh, like with incorrect API usage that uh, you may have tens of thousands of user sessions and you need to clean all it up. Yes, so if you will disable the housekeeper, basically your database will just grow and grow and grow and grow forever. Yes, so you need housekeeper to keep it at some, um, at some size. How fast will data grow? Actually, pretty fast. Right, because uh, you may say, okay, I'm keeping history. I, I'm storing just some integers, how much space it will take. Actually a lot. So uh, just look at this uh, example. Yes, this is one of the historical tables, the table history. All other history tables looks uh, really similar. And you can see that for every collected value, you are storing item ID, clock, the value, and also nanoseconds, which in this example, if you are talking about MySQL, uh, may take up to 40 bytes. Yes, so it, it depends on DB engine, maybe some other DB engines like Postgres and Oracle will use a different size fields, but here you can see around 40 bytes per a single value. So if you will multiply this with new values per second, the size can grow pretty impressive, right? So having history in hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes, it is something which happens pretty often to our, our customers. And yes, so you need clean up. Uh, next question, and uh, this is a very important question, actually. What housekeeper is doing and what housekeeper is not doing? So the answer is very simple. Housekeeper is working only with historical data uh, or let's say with data which have a clock. Yes, so your 
uh, history and trends have a clock, audit entries have a clock, events have a clock. Yes, all, all those entries are, uh, are uh, all those entries can be sorted, which are new and which are older. What housekeeper is not doing? And basically, first question, first answer, it is not removing any configuration. Yes, so the housekeeper will never ever delete item or trigger or host or a template. Yes, um, the question is, if you are using low level discovery, you have noticed, yes, that LLD is removing items and hosts uh, if they are created from prototypes, but this is the LLD itself. Yes, so the items which are created by LLD rule are deleted by the LLD manager itself or by worker. Yes, a housekeeper will never touch any item or host. Next, uh, housekeeper will not delete trigger events if there is a problem still opened. Yes, so if you have very old event, like two year old problem, which is still opened, then housekeeper will not touch it. Yes, this problem will stay until you will resolve it, close it, and then it will be deleted. Also, unfortunately, uh, the uh, housekeeper cannot keep Zabbix database at a predefined size. Yes, it's not possible to say, okay, please keep my Zabbix database up to like 200 gigabytes. Um, sorry, but that's not possible. Yes, so you need to tune all the in individual settings. You need to tune history settings, trend settings, some other settings for events, and then you can estimate the size. Yes, but otherwise you cannot just write it. And the last, so in the front end, when you are pressing clear history, yes, and basically I'm talking about this button, yes, uh, you know, when you open your uh, items, you can go to any item and at the bottom of the screen, you can press the clear history. So if you will press OK, then this will be deleted by front end itself. Yes, this is not a job for housekeeper. So I think I made it pretty clear. If you have any questions, just write in the chat. Kaspers, uh, if I may interrupt you while yeah. we haven't moved on, we have a question about PostgreSQL with timescale DB. What does that mean? You had it in one of your previous slides. Um, you talked about it, I think, in one of the first, second, third slides, something like that. Mm, maybe. Okay, I, I still uh, cannot see it here, but uh, I think I will talk about it a little bit later. Oh, okay, but we had we had a question about it with Postgres. Okay, if you'll mention it okay. later, then yeah. can go I, ahead. I will mention it in later slides. I have a slide about Postgres and Timescale DB, so I will answer that question together with the slide. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the data retention periods. So basically most of the data retention periods are defined inside housekeeping settings. Yes. So for individual items, if you are talking about individual items, then you can see here. Yes, you can see here we have the history period defined on an item level, and we can go here and we can redefine it, right? So we can redefine, and those settings here are defined on item level. Otherwise, all other settings you can see here, yes, those are defined inside Housekeeper. Uh, uh, first, you can disable Housekeeper for some sections, for any reasons. Yes, maybe you really want to keep, uh, let's say, audit settings forever. Yes, and, and you can do it. Yes, you can disable Housekeeper. Yes, uh, and you can uh, specify the storage periods individually for, for, for each data entry. Yes, for each event type and uh, for uh, user sessions, for history. Yes, you can define uh, specific periods. So, yeah, and overrides. So this is a slide about uh, time scale. Yes, uh, there are two checkboxes. 
on the history and trends section. You can see on the slide, and on my slide, I have history override enabled. So what means this checkbox? This checkbox means that um, it doesn't matter what is the history period set individually for each item. If you enable the override, then every item will have the same uh, history period. Yes, so in this, uh, in this scenario, uh, all items uh, will have 30 days history, and at the same time, individual trends period. Yes, so we are overriding just history. And this setting is used for time scale. If you, uh, if you use Postgres and you install the time scale and apply our time scale DB script, uh, then this is how you control it. Yes, so time scale, um, it's basically very similar to partitioning. Yes, and you are dropping information in chunks or, or, or in blocks. Yes, and with a time scale, you have a much better housekeeping performance. You don't have all those problems with deletes. But at the same time, when you have time scale, you no longer can uh, control individual storage periods for items or triggers, for items, uh, sorry, for history and trends. Right, so you enable time scale, and all your uh, items uh, and all your, all your items must have the same history period and the same trend period. Yes, which are defined using overrides. I, I hope I, I have answered the question. And um, one more thing: be very careful here. Look here, what I will do? I will override history. Right, I will set history like four days. I will update. So I have a global history override enabled. And let's go and let's look at the items. And what I really miss in Zabbix, yes, and be careful with this. Can you see any override here? I cannot. Yes, so there is no indication that I have some kind of override. Only if you will go inside an item, you will see here this warning. Yes, so you will see you will uh, see in the uh, global screen uh, in the global configuration screen. You will see seven days. You will see seven days here, and only this yellow mark will tell you that it's overridden. Yes, so just know about. It. Okay, I will uh, I will set it back. Uh, by the way, yes, you can see I'm using the latest release. I'm using the 6.4 release candidate one. So this is how Zabbix will look like in future versions. Yes, and the interface is improved. Interface is changed, and I'm still a little bit lost, unfortunately. Okay, let's continue. So housekeeper configuration, uh, the process. The process itself is configured inside Zabbix server configuration file. Yes, so we are not talking about, uh, let's say, uh, configuration of periods. We are talking about the process configuration. And we have two settings, housekeeping frequency and max housekeeper delete. And if you will read, there is a lot of information uh, in the config file itself about those settings, but um, sometimes it's not really easy to understand what's written here. Yes, so, okay, housekeeping frequency one means one hour, so frequency is in hours, and uh, delete is completely different setting not related to the first one, which I will uh, explain a little bit later. So let's start with the frequency. The frequency by default is one, and that's a fine setting. Yes, so you are running Housekeeper every hour and cleaning it up, which basically means you will run Housekeeper uh, pretty often, and you will delete data in small portions, right? Which I think is a good idea because if you will 
if you if you will increase the period, then you will not start. You will not uh, start housekeeper so often. But let's say you will you will you will uh, change it to four hours. This means that now housekeeper will start every four hours. But once per four hours, it will need to delete the same amount of data. Yes. So basically, you will delete the same amount. Uh, of of data from database, but now at once, yes, in in, in bigger chunks, and um, this actually may decrease the performance. So keeping the default one hour, I think, is a good idea. Okay, next, uh, the initial run of housekeeper is postponed thirty minutes from start. Uh, why? Because uh, when you start Zabbix, uh, it has already a lot of uh, performance issues. Yes, because you start Zabbix, value cache is empty. Value cache needs to warm up. Yes, and 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 maybe trends cache and maybe something else. So so um, there are already a lot of uh, pressure on database. So Zabbix will wait uh, half an hour. Uh, before starting the first run of housekeeper, because housekeeper usually is a very heavy process. Yes, um, the funny story here is um, maybe you know when trends are written to database. Trends are written to database at the beginning of every hour, right? So if you start Zabbix in the middle of an hour, basically you will have housekeeper and uh, trends. Uh, happening at the same time. Yes, two pretty heavy processes happening at the same time. So just a note, just a note, right? So maybe starting Zabbix in the middle of an hour on, on large instance is not the best idea. Yes, timing sometimes really matters. Okay, and the, the last thing, so uh, once per hour doesn't mean strict schedule. Once per hour means 60 minutes between housekeeper runs. As I said before, housekeeper is a heavy process. It can easily run for multiple minutes, yes, or, uh, or even maybe 10 minutes or more. So housekeeper will start, housekeeper, housekeeper will process all tasks, it will stop, and then from this moment in time, the 16 minutes will be measured. Yes, so every housekeeper run will happen in a little bit different uh, time. Yes, 60 minutes after the previous task has finished. Okay, I think still pretty simple. Uh, you can execute housekeeper manually. Yes, uh, that may be reasonable um, in some situations. Uh, I will give you some examples later. So first, uh, maybe you are not trusting Zabbix internal schedule. Yes, you want to create your own housekeeping schedule using cron job or, or, or whatever else. And then in this situation, you can disable. So you are disabling housekeeping process. Yes, so just uh, remember, please, that here, this setting here in the front end will disable housekeeping for some historic for some historical data, yes, at all. So let's say disabling services or user sessions means that those will be never cleaned up, right? Here in the config file, we are talking about disabling the process execution, right? So you can disable the process, the automatic uh, execution of process, but at the same time, you can do it manually. Yes, so you can write your own schedule if you want. And with a command, Zabbix server dash r housekeeper execute, you can execute it manually. And you will see an entry in the log file. Yes, the log file will write the fourth execution of housekeeper executing and then the typical report. Yet, yes, what was deleted. Um, sometimes I'm using this to uh, write some cycles of house, housekeeping. Why? I will explain it later. Yes, but sometimes like multiple simultaneous executions of housekeeper can be uh, useful. 
Okay. Now, with all that knowledge, let's continue. First, when housekeeper will finish the job, it will write report what was deleted. And uh, it's not so easy to understand what's in the report. I have spent some time with our senior developers trying to figure out what's actually here. Okay, let's start with the first entry. Deleted 41,000 history trends. So that's simple to understand. Yes, 41,000 of historical and trends entries expired. So basically they were too old. Yes, too old data. And those too old data were removed. That's very simple. And then next one, you can see 243 items and triggers. And you may say now, hey, Kaspars, you are trying to trick me because on the one of the first slides here, you said that it will never ever delete any items, hosts, or triggers, right? And now on the next slides, you are trying to, sh to you are showing us that it deleted items and triggers, yes? So, that's not exactly what you are thinking. Those 24 three items and triggers means that you somehow deleted 243 items and triggers. So you deleted, or maybe the LLD deleted, and then housekeeper cleaned up history for those items. Yes, so when you delete item, the history of the item is kept into the database and then the housekeeper will clean up. Yes, so this means that um, housekeeper cleaned up historical trends and events for those items and trigger deleted. So that's a second entry. Next is events. Yes, so events, as my colleague previously told, are created by triggers, by discovery, auto-registration, internal and services. And they also expire. Yes, so it is cleaning up old events. Uh, together with the events, it is cleaning up problems. Uh, by the way, it's not here, but um, it's also cleaning out alerts. Yes, so Zabbix is sending out email messages. Zabbix is executing remote commands. Uh, all this is in the alerts table. And um, those entries are dropped together with events by foreign key. Yes, cascade delete, basically. Okay, then uh, sessions, so user sessions. If the user has not logged into Zabbix for a very long time, then the session will expire, and, and based on a clock, it will be deleted. Alarms, so alarms are service alarms. Yes, so if you are using IT services, then the IT services will generate service alarms, and you will clean it up, and then audit records. And then we have the last one, uh, records. And I ask um, support team, I, I ask dev team, like any ideas, what are records? You know, total records or what kind of records they are. And then one of the senior devs told me, oh yeah, you know, those records are, if you are using network discovery on a proxy, and something goes wrong in a data transfer between proxy and server, and there are like partial discovery data stored, then this will be cleaned up. So basically, usually you will see zero here, and seeing zero records is normal. If you see any other number, this means you had some issue between proxy and Zabbix server, and, and Zabbix server just cleaned up some bad data. Yes, this is the explanation I got. Yes, so, so don't try to investigate here why you are always having zero records. Yes, everything else is pretty simple to explain. Okay, so, and this one, the trickiest thing, and okay, wish me good luck, and I will try to demonstrate you how it works. Yes, uh, so first, uh, look, uh, just read the configuration file really carefully. To prevent housekeeper from being overlaid, overloaded no more than four times housekeeping frequency hours are deleted in one cycle. So what does it mean? When housekeeper 
runs, it detects all the information which is outside the scope. Yes, which is too old. But in theory, you, you may have days or months of outdated information. How it usually happens? It usually happens very simple. You will uh, go. You will go to the configuration of hosts, uh, items, and for some item, you have seven days. Yes, CPU idle time seven days, and you will say, "Hey, I don't need seven days. I need one day." Yes, or maybe I need one hour. I will reduce to one hour just to show you how it works. Yes, because I don't have so old instance. So you really want to reduce the history to one hour. Yes, you are not interested in the idle time at all. So you will update the setting. And now you have the setting, which is one hour. Uh, no overrides. Just let me double check that there are no overrides. Yeah, clean. Clean setup. OK, so one hour. What happens now? You have six days and 23 hours of information which must be removed, right? Because you change the settings. And you will notice that this is not happening immediately. Yes, but history is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And after some time, you will have your storage reduced. Yes, but not as you are expecting immediately. On this slide, you can see a similar example. So history storage is reduced from 24 hours to six hours. Yes, you can see two drawings. Here you have uh, at, the, at the top, you, you have the 24 hours. Green arrows means the information which you want to keep, six hours of data. Red means the information which needs to be removed because now it's outdated. And the blue are four hours which are deleted in one cycle, yes, from here, which means you run a housekeeper. Housekeeper will find the oldest record and starting from the oldest record, it will delete four hours and stop. And next time it will, it will take next four hours and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, until you will have your history storage reduced to six hours in this example. Uh, one small note, if you want to calculate how fast it will happen, like in this situation, yes, you are reducing 20 hours to six hours, and, and, and you want to calculate how much time it will take, uh, you cannot use four hours. You need to use three hours. Why? Because remember that every hour while you are waiting, you have one hour of extra data. Yes, so housekeeper runs once per hour. So you are cleaning four hours. And next hour, it will clean another four hours. But you, will, you already have one hour of data collected which is added, right? So basically you are getting rid of three hours of data, which means in this situation, you have 18 hours uh, which are required to clean up, which will happen, I estimate in six hours. Yes, in six hours, six housekeeper executions, and now your data will be reduced. Okay, so as I said, let's try a live demo. Oh, really? Something went wrong? No, it's back. Okay. Okay. So let's take one item. Let's use CPU nice time. It's just a random item. Okay. And nice time, I will reduce, as I said, from seven days to one hour. And so I need the item ID. I need to remember the item ID because I will look into the database. Okay. So I have item ID, one hour update, and this is nice time. Let me take a check, nice time, one hour. Okay, let's switch to the database. Let's switch to the database and let's see what's happening here. Uh, null, because it's a wrong table. 
Yes, we have history and we, ha we have history uint. So this is a wrong table, basically. Okay, history. Here you can see, yes, you can see that the oldest record, okay, uh, this is a new instance and I don't have uh, seven days of data, but you can still, you can still you know, see here, it's like two days old. Yes, so I have gathered two days of data, two days of data are stored and now I have reduced it to one hour. What I will do is I will execute housekeeper. Dash app housekeeper execute. Okay, and let's go back and let's see. And look here at the difference. I can clearly see four hours, right? So housekeeper was executed. In, in my situation, it was executed manually, but um, it will happen anyway. And it removed four hours. Yes, you can see minimum data is now four hours, let's say younger. Yes, and I can repeat it. Another four hours. Yes, so this is so simple. Yes, so if you have data which are too old, four hours of outdated values based on a clock will be removed in one execution. Yes, so if you want to get rid of the data sooner, you can manually execute housekeeper. So just wait, okay, execute housekeeper, wait until it finishes and you can start a new cycle and you can uh, get rid of the data much, much sooner. Yes, because this is, uh, I have demonstrated you this on the uh, historical values. The same works for trends, the same works for events, the same works for audit, the same works for all the historical information. Yes, so if you want to clean up Zabbix database quickly, yes, remember that one housekeeper, housekeeper, one housekeeper execution cleans four hours starting from the oldest value, yes? Unfortunately, sometimes happens that there are gaps. Yes, maybe you have some time where you, where you, where you have values and maybe uh, let's say there are some time periods without values, it doesn't matter. The housekeeper will just jump over those four hours. Yes, so yeah, this is how it, this is how it works. Okay, so I think I made it pretty, clear what means four times. Uh, if you will increase the frequency, nothing will really change, right? So you will set housekeeping frequency to let's say four hours, which means it will run every four hours and remove 16 hours at once. Basically the same result, yes? So, so you, will not, you will not improve the performance, yes? It will not delete data faster. It will just do it not so often. Yes, so frequency is directly related to this. Yes, four times frequency. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, here is a slide which basically explains the same and uh, you will be able to download the slides after the meetup in a couple of days. Yes, so I will not stay here. I already showed you a live demonstration how it works. Yes, and, and here is just a slide uh, showing clocks. Yes. Okay. Now, and there is a second task. Yes. So I will go back a couple of slides. So this task is uh, the, uh, where it is? No, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here. So I, I have explained the first entry. Yes. So this is what is displayed here. How many uh, uh, history and trends were deleted. Now let's move to the second row. Let's move to the uh, data for deleted items and triggers. And this is a max housekeeper delete rows. It's a very tricky setting. Yes, because uh, it's not related to four hours. It's not related to the size of the delete. It's not a limit there. It's a different one. Yes. So this setting only affects items 
we, sorry, this setting only affects data for deleted items and triggers. Yes, because, okay, let's go back and, um, okay, I will mess up my Zabbix server. I will just unlink Linux template. Yes, you know, by unlinking the template, I will make all the items individual. Individual and, okay, so let's delete system type, okay? Okay, let's take a look what we have here. Let's take a look. We have a system time. Let me remember the item ID. Okay. And let me take a look what I have in the database for the system ID. So select count from history where item ID equals, and let's take a look. Okay, you can see 5,012 entries for this one. Yes, so this is this item and I will delete. Yes, I will delete item 42229. Okay, delete. Delete item, yes. Item deleted, bye-bye. Look here, and you can see nothing really changed. Actually, I, I have even four more values, just yes, because uh, before my before uh, my SQL screen and Zabbix screen, four extra values were collected. Yes, so you can see that uh, uh, now I have five thousand history values. So item is gone. Item is deleted. Yes, uh, if you don't believe me, then select from items and where item ID equals 42229 and there is nothing. There is no such item, but you have a history. So what happened? What happened is, if you look at the slide, uh, Zabbix created a task. Zabbix created a task into the housekeeper table. Let's check it. Here you go, you can see, you can see this is the only item which was deleted. It's a small instance, yes. And when I press the delete item button, it created entries. And by the way, the front end is pretty lazy. The front end is not even trying to analyze what item type it was like float, numerical, or maybe log. Uh, it just creates tasks for every table. It says, okay, please check all historical tables, please check all trends tables, and because maybe there was some trigger, also please check events, right, and just clean it up. Okay, let's take a look here. I will execute housekeeper. Executed housekeeper. Now, let's look in the history. What I have in a history. Look here, 16. I think you can see that this is the first entry minus 5,000, right? So this is the max housekeeper delete. Yes, once you delete items, there is a history left for them and trends left and events left. So in one cycle, no more 4,000 entries will be deleted. Yes, so you can tune this setting. You can change the setting to five or 50 or 5 million. It's up to you. Yes, just don't set it too big because it will be too much load on your DB. Yes, but this is how it works. Yes, in one housekeeper, in one housekeeper execution, so many items, so many historical entries without items will be deleted. If we will take a look into the housekeeper table, you will see this. What does it mean? Housekeeper went through all the tables the, and cleaned up all the entries from events, history, and in theory from log and string. So housekeeper checked that all those tables does not have any more data, but there are 16 entries left. And this task is left for the next housekeeper execution, right? So. If I will run it one more time, you will see that 
there are zero items left and no more tasks left. Yes, so job done. So in production, this may take hours or days, right? Maybe you have 5 million entries, right? And then it will take like 1,000 executions to clean it up for deleted items, yes? So this is, this, this is a mechanism how it works. Okay, uh, by the way, so the housekeeper table. Yes, so max, uh, max uh, delete rows will be removed. Uh, entry is removed when there is no more records left, like I showed you. And be very careful. If you will delete something from the housekeeper table manually, I have seen customers like truncating the table. Yes, they are just truncating housekeeper table. What is the result? Uh, housekeeper will be not so busy, right? So by truncating housekeeper table, you will solve a big problem. Housekeeper is no longer so busy and it runs much faster. But what happens is because those tasks are deleted, they will be not recreated, right? Because those tasks are created just once by front end, right? So when, when on the front end, you press the delete, uh, the delete uh, item button here. Yes, you are pressing the delete button. When you are deleting something, then the housekeeper is creating those uh, entries here. Right, just once. If you somehow delete them manually by yourself, you remove housekeeping tasks and the history for those items will basically stay in Zabbix forever. Yes. Okay, if you are using partitioning or time scale, they will be removed by time scale, but in a in a standard situation, yes, with a with a standard Zabbix housekeeper, sorry, those values will stay forever. Okay. And yes, so we have a lot of complaints. Yes, we have a lot of complaints that Housekeeper is slow. And because it's a heavy process. First, uh, why it might become slow? If you have a large instance and you have a large number of items, just look at the first query. And this is basically how Housekeeper knows what to delete. So the first row, if you are a little bit familiar with SQL, you will understand, right? The first row is creating array in memory for housekeeper, for process. Yes, it is creating array of items and storage period. So now housekeeper knows all the items and all the storage periods from this query. Then it runs query against every history table select item ID minimum clock from history table group by item ID. So imagine if you have like 100 gigabytes of history, right? This query will not be super fast. Yes, so grouping by, by large table, by clock, um, it's not super fast. Yes, so this may be pretty heavy. And then based on, on results of those two tables, yes, housekeeper will do his job, right? So now it knows all the items, it knows all the storage periods. It knows the minimum clock for all the history values, and it will clean up four hours, right? And this happens every hour. Yes, those queries are uh, are executed every hour by housekeeper. Yes, and um, of course, if you have a lot of values to delete, a lot of items, then yeah, delete queries are always pretty slow. Um, yes, as I, as I showed you before, if you have played around with storage periods, let's say you have massively decreased storage periods, or you have deleted a lot of items, then you will have much more history to delete, and for some time, history will become much more busy. Yes, increase, increase max housekeeper delete, and also you can kill the performance. Yes, housekeeper will try to delete more than 5,000 at once for deleted ones, and also it may become slow. Casper, uh, uh, just to let you know, we are a bit short on time. Okay, I will um, move, sorry, 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 uh, because yeah, uh, I will move a little bit faster now. Yes, okay, so this one, 
there is another process uh, which is a uh, um, problem housekeeper, right? It was introduced in Zabbix 6 uh, together with services. And this problem housekeeper has one task, delete uh, problems if triggers are deleted. Why? Because services are based on problems and uh, yeah, it will affect service calculation. So there is a separate process related just to problem deletion with separate, uh, with separate settings. Uh, this slide, yeah, sorry, this slide, yes. So separate problem housekeeper and separate settings. And proxies. So last uh, couple of slides. Don't forget that uh, you also have housekeeper process running on proxies. Yes, because proxies are also data collectors, which are sending data to Zabbix. And you need to delete the data which are sent. So here you have only one setting frequency because you don't have any deleted items on proxies. Yes, proxy configuration is controlled by server and proxy is just a data collector. So on proxies, you will see only housekeeping frequency with the same for our logic. So no differences and how the proxy housekeeper works. So the proxy housekeeper works, does not care about any item storage periods. Yes, the housekeeper uh, on proxy looks at the buffers. Yes, proxy has two buffers. How long to keep sent items and how long to keep items at all. Yes, so you, you can play around. Usually uh, proxy sends item, item is marked as sent, the date for item is marked as sent, and then the housekeeper will in next hour remove the send date. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so the buffer is, is, is very, very small. You are sending data and once per hour cleaning up the send data. But you can play around with the local buffer and keep the data longer for some reason. Yes, or when troubles happens, you can keep it longer. So you can play around with, with those buffers, but this is a different story. Yes, it's a topic about proxies. Now, we have one very funny thing. Uh, maybe you know that uh, Zabbix tables don't use auto increment at all. Yes, if you will look at the table structures for items, triggers, whatever, you will never see auto increment. Yes, uh, we are using the separate table IDS, which generates next ID. Yes, so the next ID in database is generated by Zabbix itself. Yes, not by database. But as, as always, there is one exclusion. We have a table proxy history used only by proxies where you can clearly see, yes, ID big in and side not null auto increment. This means this table is managed by DB engine, right? You insert new records and IDs are assigned by DB engine. Uh, and at the same time, you will see the IDS table on proxy where you will see proxy history, last ID, next ID. And, and, and here always comes a big question. So if you have auto increment, why at the same time you are keeping trace of next ID if it's managed by database? So, so what's the reason here? And this next ID in IDS is the last sent record. So this is how it works. Data sender sends data and it increments next ID. Yes, so you, you can see in the proxy history table, which uh, has all the records which are waiting to be sent, there is no flag sent, right? There is no column like zero, one sent, not sent, no Boolean, nothing, just information. And the IDS table keeps track of the records which are sent by, uh, keeping the, the next record, which is unsent. So be very careful. If you are truncating proxy history, and this happens for performance, don't forget to reset the IDS. Otherwise, proxy will not send any data. Yes, because when data sender is sending data, it is using this number to identify which row to send. Yes, and if your row number is smaller, then sorry, but nothing will happen. Yeah, Arthur, sorry, but yeah.
No, okay, we... thank you, Kaspers. So we have a couple of questions. Let's quickly run through them. I think they're more or less simple for you to answer. Um, I, first I up, hope you will help me, no? <laughs> ah, <laughs> not so sure this time, Kaspers. <laughs> okay. Um, is there an easy way to tell inside the Zabbix server uh, when the housekeeper has been last executed uh, and uh, show what has been removed and when? Uh, okay, so when it has been executed is basically... Um, I don't know why it's so slow. Something went wrong with my machine, right? But basically, you need to grab the var log, Zabbix, Zabbix server log, right? So var log, Zabbix, Zabbix server log. And, and, and then in the log file, you will see when it's executed. Yes, every housekeeper execution is logged here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, what has been deleted? No. No, it's not logged. I, I'm not pretty sure. Maybe if you will enable debug five for housekeeper, maybe there will be some trace of queries. I think, yes, in, in debug But that's five. a bad idea. Uh, okay, just for housekeeper, it's not so bad, right? Don't do it for entire topic server. Just for housekeeper, okay, it will not, uh, it will not kill, but, but yeah. Um, next up, what is better? Running housekeeper more often, but with less items being deleted or less often but with more items and, and other data being deleted i think for most scenarios yes by the way on my screen you can see yes so you, you see it's logging yes it's logging what was what, what has been deleted yes but uh, about the frequency i think the default frequency once per hour is pretty good setting right if you are not touching anything in zabbix so uh, from database perspective it is always better to delete data more often in smaller portions, not like try to delete million records at once, right? So run every hour with default settings. You can play around maybe with the max delete for those uh, values without items. Yes, maybe you can increase 5,000 to 50,000 if you have a fast database, yes. But, but otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. I, I really see no benefits by running Housekeeper once per day, except maybe, okay, maybe you are sharing a storage. Maybe you have a shared storage between Zabbix and other production, right? And uh, then you may decide that, okay, I will do housekeeping tasks for Zabbix at night, right? Not every hour a day, not to disturb other production, but let's say my database is more or less idle at night. And, and then you can decide to delete bigger chunks of data at night. Yes. That mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that does make sense. Um, two more questions. Uh, one is when we use timescale DB, then there is no removing of history or trend data as the data is partitioned in, in chunks. Yes. Does it remove history and trend for, uh, I guess, does the housekeeper remove history trends for items removed via front end or will they stay in the database until the chunk is removed? Uh, if you are not using compression, yes, so, so remember that uh, with the time scale DB, there is one more setting, compression, yes? So, uh, and I think you are talking about the clear history button, mm -hmm. right? Yes, so, so here, pressing clear history. So, as I said, this, as, as I said before, at the beginning of my presentation, this has nothing to do with housekeeper. When you press clear history, if you will look into the source of the page, you will find SQL delete in a plain text. Yes, I, I have no time to show it, but uh, in the debug mode, you can see a plain text SQL delete. So you press clear history, you execute delete. So housekeeper is not involved. In case of time scale, it works the same way, delete. But if those chunks are compressed, then by design of the time scale, they cannot be touched and then the clear history will just not work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the last question. So just so I understand it, if I delete items in the front end manually, I still have to run housekeeper manually in order to actually remove the data from the database. Why manually? So, okay, I demonstrated um, this manually because we don't have like six hours of, of the webinar, right? So, you know, if I will not do it manually, we will, need to, we will need to wait for hours and hours, right? 
it will happen automatically. Yes, so because uh, maybe someone is confused, yes, by a lot of advanced things I'm, I'm showing here, but uh, one more time. So this runtime command, um, as I said, uh, my console is pretty slow now, but this uh, command, Zabbix server uh, dash r uh, housekeeper execute, it is just like forced execution of housekeeper, right? And uh, here, this command, yes? So I'm forcing execution. This will happen every hour automatically, yes? But I'm speeding it up. I'm doing um, some extra executions. And another question, does the uh, storage period, I guess history storage period, once you delete an item, does it matter or? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, once you delete an item, let me go back. Let me go back to my slides once again. Yes. So as I said, please uh, maybe go through the slides very carefully. There are two different ways. So four hours, four times means expired data. The data which the data for items which still exist, but the data are too old. Yes. And storage this, period. Yes, yes. Storage period. Here. Max housekeeper delete is effective only for only for data for deleted items. Yes, so housekeeper basically when you run a housekeeper, if you will look in the debug log, you will see two cycles. You will see that first it removes all the data which are too old, and then once it's done, it starts another task working with deleted items. Yes, so every housekeeper execution has two parts. First part, delete uh, old data, expired data using those four hours. When everything is done, completed, it will start checking the tasks in housekeeper table. And then it will uh, do the second part and then it will stop and wait until next hour. Okay, last question. We don't have the time, but this is last one. I think it's a common issue, so I'll ask it. Um, what about the mythical utilization of housekeeper process over 75%? Uh, it's normal. It happens all the time. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I think, Arthur, you, you have worked in support too. Yes, it happens all the time when you have this housekeeper line, like 100%, which means, yes, the database is slow. Database is in troubles. Housekeeper is... Deleting, 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 and deleting. Yes, and and yeah. so eventually we suggest implementing partitioning. Eventually, yeah. if it if it oh. goes over that hour or so, then consider partitioning. Or SSD SSD disks. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So hardware you know. can yeah. help here. Okay, we've spent quite a lot of time. Thank you a lot, Caspers. Thank you for answering the questions and the very thorough presentation. Presentations will be available with recordings in a few days. So you guys can go through this slowly, test it out just like Caspers did, follow his uh, sort of lab tasks that he did over here on his virtual machine and see the result for yourselves. Don't forget Benelux conference in April. You will be able to meet us there, talk to us, ask us questions, share your feedback with us and do a lot more in Antwerp, Belgium this April. CFP still open for today. Have a great idea. Send it to us. Okay, guys, thank you a lot. Um, this was, like I said, a very interesting, complex in-depth webinar on best practices. And uh, we will see you next time, either live in Belgium or in our next meetup. And thank you a lot, guys. Have a nice evening. See ya.